this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to install and use Western's MyVLab. So if you're a Windows user and you're using a Windows-based laptop or desktop, you don't need to watch this video because you can install Microsoft Access directly on your computer. It's available for free, and I cover that in the software installation video. If you're a Mac OS user, on the other hand, and you're not available to go to Western's campus to use the Gen Labs, then this solution might be for you. So as I mentioned, the first solution should be to actually go to the Western's Gen Labs on campus. They're available in the Health Science Building, the North Campus Building, and the Social Science Center. You can take a look at the WTS website for a list of labs and schedules. If you're not able to go to Western's campus to use a Windows-based computer, your other option is to use Western's MyVLab service. This allows you to remotely connect to a Windows-based computer on campus and use Microsoft Access. This should be an option of last resort because it's far better to use a computer that's actually in front of you. There's a lot less chance of things to go wrong or any issues with your internet dropping out or not having quite high enough speed internet. So only use this solution if you can't actually go to a lab on campus and you don't already have a Windows computer available. So with that said, we'll switch over and take a look at how to install the MyVLab software. So in front of me, I have a Mac computer. This one might be a little bit slower than what you'd experience in real life because this one is a virtualized computer. But we'll take a look at how you would install MyVLab on it. So the first step is to open a browser like Safari. It could be Chrome or Firefox, that's fine too. And then you type in the address myvlab.uwo.ca. And that will take you to Western's MyVLab website. And it has a lot of instructions here, but what we're going to be interested in is client setup for Mac OS X. And I recommend you read through these instructions, maybe pause the video, go to this website, read through the instructions first, and then give it a try installing it following this video. So the first step is going to be to download the client. So you just click on this link called Download Mac Client. And you do need to have at least Mac OS um, 10 or higher. So right now it's downloading, it'll take a few seconds. So once it's downloaded, you can click on the Downloads button in your taskbar here, and then click on the file you downloaded, which should be called something like VMware Horizon Client. And you'll get a little message like this. This is just a terms of service you have to agree to. Uh, if it comes up in a different language like it did for me, you can change it to English. And you can read through it and then hit Agree. So once this window pops up, just click on VMware Horizon Client, drag it to Applications, and let go. And that should copy it or install it into your computer. Okay. So after it's installed, you can close this, open up Finder, go to Applications, and look for VMware Horizon Client. I have it down here. So once you get this pop-up, just click open and hit continue. And if it asks you for your password, this would be your Mac password. Whatever you have it set on your Mac computer is not your Western password. If you get a message like this pop up that says unable to access accessibility, just hit OK. Go open system preferences. Once system preferences is open to security and privacy, you click on the little lock down here. Again, you type in your Mac password, click on lock, and make sure VMware Horizon Client is checked. Needs access to your computer, 
just so it can share files between this local Mac computer and the remote Windows computer. Once you have that checked, you can just hit the X. And you might also get a pop-up about software update. For now, we'll just skip. So now we can add a server. This would be the remote computer that we're going to connect to. So we click on new server. And we have to enter the host name. Where are we going to get that from? We get it from the My VLAB website. So in these instructions that we saw earlier and that hopefully you read through, we can scroll down and it'll tell us the host name that we have to put in. So it's right here in step eight. It's myvlab.vdi.uwo.ca. I'm going to copy that. You could also type it in manually if you wanted. And we can put it in here. Once you have it typed in, once again, that's myvlab.vdi.uwo.ca. You click connect. And we only have to do this once after it's set up. You shouldn't have to re-enter that every time you want to connect. And now it's going to ask for your Western credentials. So these isn't, this isn't your Mac credentials. It would be what you use to log into OWL or Student Center. And as part of this process, it's going to ask you for your multi-factor authentication. So you should have this set up already, and it either sends a text to your cell phone, or it will send a um, phone call if you have it set up that way. So we're going to do phone call. And it should give you a call, and you have to push a button. If you give you have it set up for a text message, it'll send you a text message to your phone. Supports multi-factor authentication for certain... So you just have to push a button Goodbye. once you get your phone call, got right here. And hopefully, if that worked correctly, it should now log you into the remote Western computer. So after you first log in, the first thing you should see is a Windows desktop. And this is that remote computer that you're connecting to at Western. And most importantly, it has Microsoft Access installed. For all the other software in this course, Notepad++, DIA Diagram Editor, and Excel, you should not be using MyVLab for that because you can install that right on your Mac computer. Um, for Notepad++, instead you use the alternative of brackets. But you should only be using MyVLab for access because you don't really want to use this unless you have to because it's going to be really laggy because you're working on a remote computer as opposed to the computer in front of you. So if you don't see Microsoft Access on the desktop for some reason, you can find it by just going to Start and typing in Access. And then you would just double click on it to run the program. But before we get into that, the most important thing when working with MyVLab is to understand where you're saving files. There's a few different locations we have to consider. If we click on My Documents, My Documents uh, is going to be stored on the remote computer. So it's safe to st store files here in Documents. They will be there the next time you log in, but they are going to be on that remote computer. So you won't be able to access them from your local computer when you're not in MyVLab. Second place, consider is when we go to this PC, we can also see the H drive called My Files. So again, this is a drive that's on Western's network. It's not on your own computer. So it's safe to save things here, but we're not going to be able to access them on our home computer. So what I recommend is while you're working on your assignments, you save to either the H drive or documents. And then when you're done the assignment and ready to move it to your own local computer to um, upload it to OWL to submit it, for example, you would then copy it over. And I'll show you how to do that. So right now we're looking at documents. This is on the remote computer. We can copy the files we want. In case this case, I have a bunch of access files here. You can either hit Control C to copy, or you can right click and hit copy. Then we go back to this PC. And you'll see that we have a few drives down here. How many that you have is going to depend on how your computer's set up and what folders you've added um, to my VLAB. But you should have at least one that says something like, Z or like that, and your computer's name. In this case, my computer's name is Strix, so that's going to be my local computer. So if I wanted to move some files from my VLAB to my local computer where I can access them and upload to OWL, I'd click on this drive. And these are all files on my own local computer. This is my local Windows computer. So for example, if I want to move them into Documents, I click on Documents. And then I could right click and hit paste. And it will slowly copy over the files from my VLAB onto my local computer. Then once I'm out of my VLAB, 
I can go to my documents folder on my local computer and then upload those to OWL. So if you don't have any of those folders here, like we have here, if you only have HMI files, we can fix that, don't worry. And these instructions might be slightly different depending on the version of your my uh, VMware uh, client or what operating system you're using, but it will be something like options up here at the top and you want to click on shared folders. The exact layout might be slightly different, but it should say something like shared folders. And you can see a list of folders and drives that you're sharing. So if you want to add a folder from your local computer and make it accessible on my VLAB, you click add, you select the folder. For example, you could go documents, click OK. It should now list it in folders. You click apply, click OK. And you can see now there's a documents folder. So now I have my documents, my downloads, and my whole drive. I could access any of them from my VLAB and then copy the files into there. So once again, I do recommend saving them to documents on my VLAB or H on my VLAB while you're working on the assignment, and only when you're done, then move them over. The reason for that is in the past, some students have some, had some issues when they're saving directly onto their local computer from my VLAB. When the connection's lost, it might corrupt the file. So it's always best to, first of all, keep backups, and second of all, to be saving on me, my VLAB on documents or H, and only when you're done, copy them over. That way, if something goes wrong with the copy, you can just copy them again. You won't lose any work. To get out of my VLAB, once you've finished your work, for example, all you have to do is hit the X up here. Now will close it out, and then you can find those files on your own local computer if you've copied them, and then upload to OWL. That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions about how my VLAB works, or you're having any trouble with it, please either email me to let me know, or you can post on the course forums. That's always the preferred option, as it can help other students if they have the same question. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.